All right, so that brings us to the end of module four. And in this last section, we're just simply going to review everything that we learned in this module. So remember, when the market moves up and then pulls back, the highest point reached before it pulls back is now resistance. As the market continues up again, the lowest point reached before it climbs back up is now support. And remember, this is the same whether it's trending up or trending down. Remember that horizontal support and resist levels are not exact numbers. Think of them as zones. So one way to help you find these zones is to plot support and resistance on a line chart rather than a candlestick chart. Another thing to remember is that when price passes through a resistance level, that resistance could potentially become support. The same could also happen with a support level. If a support level is broken, it could potentially become a resistance level. We learn about trend lines, and in their most basic form, an uptrend line is drawn along the bottom of easily identifiable support areas or valleys. In a downtrend, the trend line is drawn along the top of easily identifiable resistance areas or peaks. Remember, we have three types of trends. There's an uptrend, sideways trend, and downtrend. One way to identify uptrends is that it has what's called higher lows. So you can see here, for example, here's a low as it comes back down, and then it goes up, and the next low, which would be around here, is higher than the last one. So it has higher lows every time. Whereas a downtrend has what's called lower highs. So you can see the market comes up here, and then it comes back down, and then comes up again. This high here is lower than the previous one, so it has lower highs. We then learned about channels. You just draw the uptrend or downtrend line, and then you draw another one at the exact same angle and just put it on the other side of the candles. We have the same three types, an ascending channel, a horizontal channel, and a descending channel. Then we also learned that trading support and resistance levels can be divided into two methods, the bounce and the break. When trading the bounce, we want to tilt the odds in our favor and find some sort of confirmation that the support or resistance will hold. Instead of simply buying or selling right off the bat, wait for it to bounce first before entering. By doing this, you avoid those moments where price moves so fast that it slices through support and resistance levels. And then if you're going to trade the break, there's the aggressive way and the conservative way. In the aggressive way, you simply buy or sell whenever price passes through a support or resistance zone with ease. In the conservative way, you just wait for price to make a pullback to the broken support or resistance level and then enter after price bounces off of that. All right, that's it for this module about support and resistance. In the next module, we're going to talk about Japanese candlesticks. Then in the modules after that, I'm really excited because you're going to see how we can put all of this together and develop a really good strategy to trade manually in the market. So I'll see you in the next module. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you join our free Discord channel to get access to all the cheat sheets and a bunch of other cool bonuses. The next video in the course is right here.